and good day today we're doing a well a major upgrade as you can see here for my old CR-10 now at the bottom section here this is the Z uh, axis upgrade the back bit there which I'll be doing a second video on so it'll be a part two that's the electronic upgrade to convert the CR-10 into a CR-10S and uh, it even comes with the filament sensor so it's got everything so once this is all fitted you won't know the difference between a CR-10S and what I've got here which is going to be a CR-10S and here are my two printers I've got the third one outside which is a mini the first one here is the Creality CR-10 and the second one is the Creality CR-10S and that's the back end of the CR-10 you can see we've only got one uh, stepper motor there so it's only got the one z-axis over here we've got two stepper motors as you can see and we've got two rods coming up so we're going to convert the old CR-10 which is this one to another CR-10S now the first thing I'm going to be doing will be attaching this little bracket to the stepper motor itself now we have a couple of little t-bolts that need to go through so we'll grab a couple of little tiny screws here that's the ones there they just simply go through that section there and the t-nut itself fits on the other side so we'll just temporarily screw it down a little bit we do the same with the other little section here again just a fairly small bolt that goes through we we'll just put the little t-nut on there that's just a couple of winds to get it started now that we've got that we need to put a couple of little uh, smaller bolts through that little section there so we have two of them that fit through one on either side And that's that there and that just bolts straight onto the little stepper motor and we use the existing Creality tools to make life a bit easier for yourself now I've had to reposition the camera so we'll put the stepper motor in with the little T-bolts drop it in down there and you can use the existing toolkit that came with your Creality and what you've got to try and do is get that little T-bolt to turn and lock in position which that one has and the other one is turning now so here we go now I've got the stepper motor in place so the next piece I'll be doing is putting this little end cap for the Z-axis so it's just a couple of little medium bolts drop it through pokes out the other end and probably easier just to put the allen key through hold it in position and grab the t-nut and just thread it on lightly just a couple of couple of turns will do it do the same with the other side again just bolt drop through drop in something to hold it in place i'm just using again the allen key and uh, just give it a couple of twists and that's all you've got to do to get that basically assembled now that fits on top of the gantry so I'll reposition the camera again and we'll have a look at uh, fitting it and here we are at the top of the gantry and we'll just pop that little bit in there and again we just use the Creality tools that came with your original printer and we'll just lightly tighten these up And then I'll come back and we'll tighten it, uh, tighten it up fully off the camera because I can't quite get at the angle here. Now I've got that uh, nice and tight so we can get on to the next bit which is way down the bottom again. I'm going back to the stepper motor this time. So I'll reposition the camera again. And here we are back at the uh, stepper motor. We're going to put the little coupler in. Now you'll notice there's two different sized holes on it. The larger hole goes to the top, the smaller one to the bottom. So just drop it in position, grab your allen key and tighten it up 
Now the next thing I'll be doing will be fitting the plate and we need to remove a couple of uh, bolts here and we need to remove that one there so zoom in a little bit and uh, we'll just take them off and again it's not a not a big deal you just simply come in from behind and loosen and just remember when you're taking these off keep the orientation of uh, the bits and pieces of the there because all we're going to do is replace it with a longer bolt and we will be putting uh, another spacer in so I'll just take these off I'll loosen that one there, go the next one down the bottom to give you an idea of what's going on take that one, loosen it off And we come to the other one over here, which we just loosen off. Where are we? That'll do for the moment. And I'll just get these off. I don't know if I can do them by uh, finger at this point. No, it's still too tight. That. We also have to loosen this bolt here. Oh, I forgot about that one before, so we got to do that to take off the pressure for the T bolt. There we go, that slides out, and there we go. So that's the piece that comes out. And what we have to do now is take off this particular bolt here so I'll get it off so we'll just get that bolt off it's a bit awkward trying to work on the side of the camera but we'll get it now there it is that's off so we'll get into the next bit so we've got the plate with the wheels already taken off you pop a washer over one of the long bolts fits through the hole there, make certain that the little eccentric bolt itself, the little flange, fits down into the hole, put your wheel on next, another spacer, and over the top of the spacer, this then fits. So we'll just put a little, just a little bolt on it for the moment, to, just to hold it in place. So I picked up one there, and we'll just tentatively tighten it up with the fingers so it should look something like that now I've assembled it as you can see we've got um, the bolt going through there's a washer in there we've got the little eccentric bolt we've got the wheel that spins spacer the new plate and bolt on the other side you've got to have it reasonably tight because once you've got it positioned in here with the little uh, T-bolts you're not going to be able to get in there and tighten it anymore so 
that's what we've done. So let's position it now and uh, see if we can get it to the next stage. And again, we just tighten it. I'm not going to tighten it up 100% at this moment. I want it a little bit on the loose side. I can't get that to, to bite. I'll do the other side now. Now that one's biting. And again. Yeah, that's biting now. Okay, the next thing I've got to do is I just swing this out of the way for the moment. I'll put a couple more bolts through. So bolt, spacer, wheel, spacer. Now this goes over the top, which I'll leave that sitting there for a second, and we do the same on the next one underneath. So we go through with the bolt, spacer, wheel, another spacer. And this is where you juggle it a bit and you try and very carefully get that to slide past without things dropping out. And there we go, that's down. It's a bit tricky to do this. And the bottom one do the same thing, just push it back so that that'll just drop over the top of it. And there. Now I'll see if I can get that to line up. And this is really, really fun and games because I can't see where the, uh, where the holes are because the camera's in the way. So I might have to move the camera, I think, and come back to this. Let's have a look, let's see if I can do it here. Oh, there we go, got it. And uh, get this other one. A little bit better alignment. There we go, got it. Right, now we put the, the bolts on the other side. And it's not too bad. Now, I still haven't tightened up the T-bolt yet because I want to make certain that the Z-axis will come down nicely and link up with the coupler but what I'll do in between time I'll just tighten these uh, little bolts up a bit and uh, here we go I do have a socket set that can do this job but uh, a lot of people won't have them so I've just simply opted to use the tools that came with the kit or well, not with the kit, I should say, with the printer itself, because everybody will have that. Now for the next bit is popping the Z-shaft down, and uh, hopefully everything will align. Soon find out. Yeah, that aligns, which is good now for the coupler down the bottom and see how far we're off there. Let's zoom in a little bit. And it looks, whoops, I'm bumping the camera. And uh, yep, she's definitely, definitely aligning, which is good. Okay. Now what I'll be doing next is I'll be measuring from the table to the bottom just to make certain that we are sitting at the same level so I'll go get a tape measure and we'll come back and check that out it's important to take a tape and measure 
the distance between say a flat surface and the bar itself with the top or the bottom it doesn't really matter as long as both measurements are identical and you do that before you tighten up your T-bolts or the coupler and if the, everything matches up perfectly tighten them once you finish tightening them come back again and measure one more time to make certain that nothing has shifted then you know that everything's uh, nice and level and you're going to get good prints out of it so let's get on to the next stage well we're up to the next stage which is fitting the cable itself so we'll take off the rubber band and uh, pop this over I'll put it in to the uh, just plug it in over here and that's sitting in there. I'll probably finish up. I might put a zip tie on it and uh, run it up underneath. I haven't quite made up my mind where I'm going to put it yet. And we need to, for the other end, get into the box itself over here and start uh, pulling a few things apart. So we'll get into that now. So I'm going to have to get into the little box here. So I'll start by taking off these things on the top. And this is end of part one. Part two will be fitting all the electronics in the box itself. So if you like what you see, please subscribe and remember to click that little button down there, the bell button, and select all and you will be notified when the next video goes up. In the meantime, thanks for watching.